Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor scale, fret number seven, focusing on the G note. Get ready, some coffee, and relax, because getting ready to play guitar should not be like getting ready to get tarred, as in tarred and feathered. You know, because playing guitar should be fun, whereas to get tarred, as in tarred and feathered, seems intentionally designed to be unpleasant. Although it does seem like many people actually pay to get tarred these days. You know, in modern spas, claiming it's good for their skin. I, I still think it's some form of self-flagellation myself. But whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because like a master martial artist who's had a sharp spear thrust in anger in their direction, it's totally beside the point because we're doing the fun one here. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of the project thus far, noting that you don't have to have watched all prior presentations to follow along with this presentation, but a general overview of the overall project can be useful. Let's go back to the first tab to get that overview. We started out thinking about the C major scale. You can also think of related modes. First, mapping it out in open position, which we are defining as frets 0 through 3, noting that this E represents the low or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling. The funnest way to learn notes in open position is to actually map out the chord constructions from the scale that we are in, in this case C major, the first uh, chord then being the C major chord, which we mapped out in open position, discussed in detail. We then went to the F because the F also has a major chord construction, the four chord. We then went to the five chord, then back to the minor chord constructions with the D minor, the two chord, the three chord, the six chord, and then to that diminished in the seventh. After having done that, we have basically mapped out all the notes of the C major scale and related modes in this open position frets zero through three, which basically looks like this shape here. And then we wanted to jump to the middle of the guitar and start learning from the middle of the guitar, this time not starting by using chord constructions, but rather using scale shapes, pentatonic, and then the major scale shapes. So we learned that middle part of the guitar here and saw how we can connect it to what we learned basically in open position and focus then on the notes in the C major scale and related modes, the C, uh, the F, the G, uh, uh, the, the, the third, and the sixth. And then we wanted to move then to the next position and that's gonna be starting on fret number seven. So that's where we're at at this point in time. We've discussed this position in general, and now we're focusing on notes within it. This time, we're going to be looking at this position starting on fret number seven and focusing in on the G, which is basically the fifth of our C uh, major scale. So that's going to be our general idea this time. Let's get a quick recap of all the colors here. I know this color scheme can be overwhelming. What we did is basically we laid down the baseline color, which are all the colored ones are going to be some form of uh, note that's in the C major scale, the one through the seventh here. So all those are basically legal notes uh, that we can play. We laid on top of that these green notes, which are basically the pentatonic uh, scale. So they're five out of the seven notes. Uh, but that pentatonic scale is majorly related to either the major scale or its related minor scale. When we get into the other modes, which kind of is what we're doing here, then it, it's not as, uh, it's, it gets a little bit more complicated. But that's what those green notes are. And then we have the notes of the point of focus, which is going to be the G. And if we build a chord from that G, the one, three, five intervals, of the chord from G are green. That's going to be our most important note is the light green. And then the red is going to be our second most important note. And then the yellow, the fifth, is going to be our third most important note. So the general idea is we're going to be focusing around those important notes. And then all other notes are basically legal. 
and we've excluded all the white all the white guys. All the white guys are out. We can't play them because they're toxic. Those ones are the toxic ones, and you you step in lava if you touch on if you touch those ones. So then we're really focused on this yellow box. So this box is representing the frets that we're going to be in. And then this red box represents the last position uh, that we took a look at. Now you can name these positions. I would call this first one position number one, this shape in red, I would call it position number one. Some people will call it a G shape because if I look at the C that we're in, the C major scale, you can build, you can see how we could build, you know, the C shape uh, from from it. If we we're going to map out a C uh, chord, it's actually a G shape. So you can call this a uh, G shaped uh, C major chord, which is then constructed around this whole scale. We'll talk about that later, though, when we get into the caged system. I would call this yellow one then uh, position number two, or you might call it an uh, e shape position if you want to use that terminology which we'll talk more about when we get into uh, the caged shape you can see there's overlap between these two positions so if i looked at this uh, first position on the guitar starting on the fifth fret top string you can see it, these three notes and then here there's an overlap between these two notes and then up to here so that overlap gives us kind of the flow as we're going from one one shape uh, to the other can help us to to give to bridge that gap between uh, the two of them. So that's going to be the general idea now in the shape. So I'm going to pull this one. I'm actually going to remove the overlap for now, just so we can focus just more on this yellow shape. Uh, and that's going to be our point of focus, so we can see it more clearly. Now we're going to be focusing in on the yellow represents the notes that are basically in the shape that we're looking at the ones the threes and the five the major shape there's a couple other ones here here and here but this is probably the main structure that you would be looking at uh, uh, in in this shape the first one that would kind of come to mind so that's what this is and you can see it's actually got like a c shape right this looks like the c shape if you had a c in open position so if i put my finger here that would be like a, a C shape on the guitar this way. If I bring that to open position, it's a C here. So we can call that like a C shaped uh, G major chord. So it's a little bit confusing the terminology. We'll get into the cage system later, but that's what the yellow is. The red over here represents the 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 notes that we can make our 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 one three five in the other shapes. So you can see behind this uh, C shape, if I played this one, this or uh, this one, and then these three, you've got like a D shape uh, kind of construction, which most people see like this. It's still a G chord we're talking about, but a D shape. And then here, from this down to here, you've got basically an, an E type of shape. And then of course, you've got your G shape going back here. So we'll talk about those more uh, later, but right now we're focusing in on this shape. Now, the, the couple ways that we can learn to do this is we, we can say, how can I practice with this uh, G shape? Well, we're in the C major chord again, the C major scale, I mean, and we could play as though we're C is the root and then just put in a G from time to time to practice hitting that G. And so if I practice that just to show you what I mean in open position, because it's easier to see there, we could say, okay, if I was playing a C, I could start with the C, put in something else like an F, and then go to my G, practice going to my G, which is my point of focus, and then back to the C. So I can practice playing in the key of C while picking up that G. But if I want to really practice on this G in particular, I might try to make it the the tonic the thing that i'm going to be going back to all of the time and the easiest way to do that is to basically start and stop with the tonic so i'll start that in open position and we'll move that same concept then up to when we have the g up here so we'd start with a g then to a c an a i'm just playing chords that are that we've seen in this position an e minor that's an a minor an e minor and then back to a g now 
if we do that, we're basically playing around the G. That means we're basically playing in Mixolydian. We'll talk about modes uh, more later, more formally, but all you're doing, all you would do is we're just basically taking that fifth and making it the first, and then everything else is the same if we were to convert uh, to the Mixolydian. But for now, I just want to think, I want to think about everything being the same so I can still play in the same areas and then, and just note that I'm going to be playing around the five and making that the tonic. That's how I'm going to basically think about it. And then again, later on, we'll get more formally into changing it to a Mixolydian, which I think if you learn to play around the five, it'll be a lot, a lot easier than to think of it as the first. And then we can start thinking about the different intervals, which do actually get somewhat, <laughs> you know, complex. So that's going to be uh, the general idea. Now, notice, I think it's easier to make the G sound like it's the tonic, even though it's the fifth, than it was with like the fourth for some reason. So the fourth, sometimes you have, you if you try to play around the fourth, sometimes it's hard to get that resolution. If you play with the G, I, I think it's easier to make it feel resolved. But remember the trick to always try to resolve our one trick is you could say, if I'm having trouble making that feel like the tonic, like I'm getting back home, it feels like it's resolving, is to take the fifth and resolve at home. Now the fifth is a D here. So if I took that, the fifth is a D. Now the D here in our scale is a minor, like this. And that's not really what we want for the resolution. We want a major D, which resolves back in to the G pretty well. So, so that's gonna be the little trick that you can throw in when you're playing, uh, you, you're making the G, we're playing around the fifth, we're basically playing in Mixolydian. I can kind of switch from that. I can break the rules and we're gonna step in the lava of one of those white notes, but it's gonna actually little, a little bit of flavor as long as, as long as it doesn't mess up. <laughs> as long as not too many of them in there, right? Then we can, <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're gonna say, so if you're, so if you're in a G, you're gonna say you can go to a, a C, an A, and there's the, the D minor, and then I can switch that to a D major. And that might give you a little bit more of a resolution. Uh, and, then, and then you can even go a step further than that because we saw that you might take the, the uh, seventh of a D major, which would be the, 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 the uh, I think it's the dominant seven, which is actually going to be this C. So that might even give you a little bit more resolution. Versus a normal, versus like a C. Versus a minor. So that's one little thing. So I'm not going to get into the, to adding uh, the, 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 the uh, dominant seven. But I'm just gonna. But I might throw in that C major to go back to the to the G. So you can do that up here in our position where you have this basically the C shape, which looks like that. Well, where's the D? Well, we know that there's a D here. There's a D here. So that's gonna be our our basically our our G shape D. So I can play like this. It's a D major, or I can play like these three down here or this just basically like that or I can pick up that bit down here and then resolve it into my G like that that's kind of a, a cheating G or like that that we can play so that's how we can apply that out okay so so that means we're, we're gonna be playing around the G so when I move up to this space then then our strategies to do that would be that one, I can play everything in this position. Remember, I should be able to play all my chords. I have the capacity to play all my chords in uh, this position. And so we could go from like a C in this position or starting with a G and then go to a C and then go to an F and then play everything within this position in like uh, chords. Uh, or we can practice moving from the prior position you know, into this uh, uh, position, or we can practice going from the open position over here and then finding a line that we can go from here into this position. So those are the, some of the strategies 
uh, that you can you know practice and, and get to know the G within this position uh, with. That's the general idea. Okay, so now first what I'd like to do is just think about going through this scale in this position. So remember this scale starts basically right here, but you don't really want to play the scale shape like, you know, like just like that because it's going to sound like you're in you're you're in a B, right? Starting at the 7 as your major like a locrian or something. And we want to make this the tonic. So I'm going to count through it as though I'm starting on the fifth. I'm not gonna make it the first, that's what we would do if we put it in the mode, but I'm gonna try to count through it from the fifth and then go back to the fifth, right? So I'm starting here, there's my fifth, that's gonna be my point of focus right there. And then let's see if we can count through this going five, uh, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, Five. So now we're ending. Copy, paste, down here. Boom. So we just went one, and then I'm just staying in the shape, and then I'm going to here two, three, four. Uh, I'm sorry, I started at five. <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five. Right, and we can keep on going up there from there and go five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, and then I'm gonna go back two, one or eight, seven, six, five. And then it, right, so that's gonna be the general the general idea. Now as we do that, we might wanna then hit the chord shape that we're focused in on every time we get to the fifth. So the major chord shapes that we can see here is this is basically a C shape that we're working on, which I can see like this. The easiest way to see the C shape is actually with with this, this, and this, because that's how we see, that's how we play the C shape in open position. That's a C shape G major chord. So if I played it back here, C shape up here, boom. Now the problem with that shape is you don't, you get the first, you get the third, but then you get another first. We're not picking up the fifth. Not a not a big deal because the fifth is really not the one that gives it its, its flavor as a as a major. It's the third. So you can still play it that way, and you have to mute this string, which isn't really difficult to do. And you can so totally fine to play, but it doesn't pull in that last uh, fifth. So to pull in that fifth, there's actually a couple variants that that we could do that. One is to say, well, I'm going to start here with my pinky, which is a little bit more more uncomfortable. And then there's the third, and then the fifth is back here. So this goes boom, boom, and then there's the fifth. And then you've got this extra finger, which you could just put down and pick up another G, which isn't required, but you might as well if it's there. And right? that's one way you can play it. Another common way that people play it is just to f forget this pinky, right? If you don't lay down the pinky, you still have what you need, or or if you or sometimes you don't just don't have time to put it down, and then you could put it down afterwards, because if you just play this, this, and this, you, it's it's the same three notes but inverted, so you still have everything you need for a G major. It's just inverted, gives you a different sound. And then you also have then uh, down here, down here, this is like, a lot of people think of this as a D shape, and it is a D shape, if you're leaning back to this note, but if you're leaning forward, it's part of the C shape. You can see it right here, so it's, it's, so it's right there. So again, we'll get into the cage system more in detail later, but that, so, so you can play that little triangle that fits like uh, a, a D. So we have that, and then you can pivot around this, this note to get to that. Or if you go from this shape, you can, you can uh, pick this finger up and put it here instead, which leads into this shape. And then you put this pinky, this pinky down to get that full, that full shape going that way. And then up top, We've got this bit, which are these three, which again, inverted. So from here, so you've 
got those three that you can play up top. So those are kind of your home base, uh, your major home base ones that you can play. So the next thing we might want to do is then try to see what we can play kind of around our G and just try to feel around what is available to me in the G. Now if I pick this G, it's natural for me to put my pointer on it and reach upwards, but that's not the direction I'm going. I want to, I want to lean backwards on it, right? So we could just, the most comfortable position here is we might just start off with basically our, our position here and then we can arpeggiate that basically and then see what kind of notes we can kind of pick around off of that space. So for example, I have these notes behind here that I can be picking these up. Now sometimes it gets a little bit tricky to use your pinky right there and you might alternate from your pinky to basically your ring when you're picking those notes up and you might be alternating from this full position to like a G shape that looks like this which is going to be a little bit more comfortable. So you might start off with like a ring finger there for example and then play this C shape which is kind of the shortened uh, shape that's a little bit easier to finger and then mute this string and then we can reach back. I got that A which is right here so I could pick up that A underneath as well Just to do it like this. So if I'm here I'm going, so now I'm going so we can pick those up uh, we know that of course we have this third right underneath so sometimes just playing uh, this shape could be useful so if I just play those two then I know that I'm reaching up to the root which is the G right there so I can see that I can play those two, I can play those two together with a double stop, which is the G and the, and the C. And then I've got basically this whole, all of these notes down here are fair game. So I can bar anything on this side that I want. So I want to make that the, I want to make sure I hit the G and then I can kind of noodle back to the G to make it the home. I can always go back to that, which is basically the, the major root, and then I have these two below here. Got this little box shape. That's going to give me some tension. That's the B uh, and the F. Kind of resolves back to here. So. kind of play around uh, within within that little shape and then if I was to see this G shape down below then we could say okay what can we do with this I see my shape right here so that's kind of like my ending point and I see I have this nice uh, little box on these ones so we could say this whole thing fits into a nice easy box so I can see that end it right there this bottom part of the box I, can, I have once again the the one and the three so I have that little shape once I'm on this shape that leads me into reaching back up again that's my pivot point to reach me back up to here to my full D so when I'm going from this D I can use this finger as my pivot to, to then reach up to that or I can basically see that note and switch my fingers to pivot here and reach up that way so those are the ways I would generally see it. Now, now then if you're practicing within this shape, then you might try to practice playing all the notes that we've learned thus far within here. So we could, you know, play a G like this 
which is a hard one to kind of switch to sometimes. So sometimes those easy, the easy C shape is easier to play. We saw that we had a C, which is basically this is a this is an an E shaped C major that we what we've built uh, in prior presentations, and then we also have the F, which is this is, this is an A shaped F major. So we've got the the one the four and the five, but we're focusing on the five being the center point. So I can say, all right, well, if I'm, I could start with the five, which is the G, and then we can switch to uh, a C and play that, and then to an F, which is that A shape, and then back to the G, which I'm playing with the shortcut kind of C shape, which is the easy way to play it, or uh, down here and we could switch between those two. I can start here. I can play the C which looks like this Kind of like the F that a lot of people play the F. It's still the same shape here uh, And then and then we can go to the A shaped. I'm sorry. That was a C and then the A shaped F and then back to the G Kind of easy to use this this G right here and then switch to because I'm pivoting on this finger the C which is an E shaped C major and then the A which is I'm just gonna bar those I could pick up the full thing like that and then back to this shape making it home if you wanted to throw in the D the D major to kind of lead back again because that's the fifth it's right here and then you can pick up that uh, this note over here, but you don't really have to. I'll just pick up the one, the three. So I can go from the G to an E-shaped C to an A-shaped F, and then just pick up the two notes of the D major, noting that this note is outside of my, this is a white note we're picking up, but that's going to lead into, possibly, that leads into my s right there. So that's one way we can play it. We can play the chords that we've learned in position. We can do some picking in between those chords in position uh, as well. The other way we can learn it, maybe, maybe we're not as comfortable learning uh, each of the chord shapes there, so we might play it in, like, open position here. And then jump up, see where I'm going to jump, which is going to be to this shape. So then I'm going to think, okay, I'm going to play down here my good old G, and then see if I can just jump up to that G right here and then noodle around something within it. Something like that. Now you might throw in something other than just the G and then I can go from a G to a C and I could play the C and noodle around up here within the C too, but I'll just kind of noodle around at home. I'll go G, and then I'm going to jump up and do basically the same kind of thing. And then to the C. Back to the G. into the D major to resolve back to the G. Now it's also knows that this G right here, this is also a G we haven't talked, we've talked a little bit about in the past, but it's a pretty comfortable shape because it's once again that E shaped G. So that's another one that easily you can, you can move into 
uh, pretty cl pretty nicely when you're when you're going back up and back basically uh, the neck. So that's one way we can do it. We can also say, okay, well, what if I play this position, which we talked about last time, uh, starting on the fifth, which most people see play in A minor, but we don't want to play it in A minor. We want to be playing it in the key of G. So the key of G in this position, you can see is this, you have basically this D shape here, right there. If I lean it back, then we're picking up that G right there. So I have this shape. Now I could pick it up and try to do this, but that's way too hard for me. I, my fingers can't do that. I have not the longest of fingers. <laughs> so I'm just gonna play this, boom, boom, these three. And that's kind of like our major shape leaning leaning uh, back this way. You can also have a shape you can see here, uh, these two and this one. So you could play like this up top, right? And so those are gonna be uh, your major shapes. And then when you move back to this shape, you've got a nice G right there, which is nice and ready. You can also play it shorthand, just basically uh, these three notes. So, which is nice and easy, but I think it's... So that's gonna be, so that's gonna be the idea. So if the, then the question is, well, if I start on something like this, I'm playing this, boom, boom, then I can play that and of course walk down to this shape and I can play something like in between. So I'm just gonna look at my two destination points, which are here and then there. And then what can I do like in between? I'll noodle around like in between learning this shape in both spots, right? So it'll be like, eh. So I'm just playing, I'm basically just doing kind of the easiest pivot finger, which is this finger, this finger, and saying, okay, what's available to me here? Well, I can go, obviously, uh, boom, 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 and then I'm right there, right? Or I could put some double stops if I'm, I want to do something other than just walking. Dun, dun, dun. I could see that this shape works there too and then move up to that shape I can go from here so now I'm just basically looking at combinations of strings I'm not really thinking about what they what chords I'm playing I am playing chords if I pick right if I do this and then I take those three I'm basically playing an A minor, right? I can take those three. I'm playing uh, a major uh, chord, uh, but there, I believe, uh, an F, right? And then I can move that up to here to the G. But I'm not really thinking about the chords this time. I'm not thinking about chord constructions. I'm just saying those work. Does it sound good? Anything that's colored, as long as I don't hit those white notes, as long as I don't hit those dang white notes, I'm going to... So I could do the same thing and then say, let's lead it up to this note up top. So if I play this down here, I can play those three, which I, I like to do. And that gives me, that's basically an, an E minor. And then once I have these two, I can go up to that, which we played last time. And then I can go up to here, which is another way to play R basically C shape, right? This, this is the same C shape, but now I'm putting the fifth on top of it, adding that uh, that D. So we don't have to do that. I could just play it up here. So now I can go from here. And then once I'm in this shape, I can convert that into my C shape G like that. I can go back the other way, pivoting on on this string. So 
I'm just trying to find some somewhat creative ways to walk that might include some double stops rather than just walking, <laughs> right? So that's going to be that, and then we could go we could go all the way back. Like we could use this shape, which again is quite common shape, and do the same thing. If I'm going to use this shape, which is an E-shaped G major chord, then I can use maybe like these two fingers, and then that that takes me to there. takes me up and then I'm in my position here I can walk back the other way something like that in that shape and then if we go all the way from this shape this is our G shaped here the one we're probably most common know and then I'm just gonna try to make a line going from here up to up to basically here, right? So how can we do that? Well, we could we could play our G shape, and then I could start like from this finger. Here's my good old pointer finger, which is gonna be right there. <laughs> and I could move that up, right? I can say, okay, well that I know that 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 I can move up to like around here, and I have like a little a box in here, right? And the fifth, so I can be like. Uh, I play and then I pivoted on this to get to this string so I just went double stop double stop I'm playing that little G D shape to take me basically to this shape which I then pivoted in to the C shape and then I can start here do the same thing. I could play, I could do that same thing, but do the top bit. I can convert that to here. All right, so we're just finding ways to kind of walk, walk up and back. If I use this finger up top, so now I can use maybe this finger and say, okay, well, where's that gonna land? That's gonna land me like up top here. <laughs> if I move that forward, so it's gonna go, okay. Right, something like that. to find lines going up top if I if I start down here with this finger then you know that's gonna take me where is that gonna take me well that takes me into my what, what did I control Z that's gonna take me into you know basically my box here I know that's always a legit spot to be <laughs> box there which I can then convert into my C shape now you can also play this G like this way you know sometimes that's and then you have different fingers that you can move up but that's going to be the the general that's the general idea so 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 we should be able to play all everything we want in this position we've we've looked at three notes in this section or three chords in this position 
And then again, we can kind of practice playing around this G by moving it up and so on. And by doing that, we will be practicing the, the, the G chord, although it's still in the C major scale. The notes around it are the C. And just to compare that to the, if I had a G major, so just if I scroll all the way down, and if I built this out, uh, but I was in, in the key of G, where do I want to go here? Where did I do that? Down here. And then I'm going to hide all of this stuff. So, so now if I look at these two, you can see that we have in this position the same we can fit the same chord in there da 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 copy paste uh right there but it's not exactly the same shape right so this is what i think really confuses people because uh it's hard to wrap your mind around the fact that I'm playing the same three notes, but all the, the shapes around it aren't the same. So what does that mean? Am I in this mode or am I in my different mode? Which other notes can I play around it and which can't I and so on and so forth. That's why I want to go into it as in depth as we can in one scale and its related modes, but thinking of them as related positions. And then once you get that concept down, you could, you could do, you could, you, you'll see which stuff can convert to now then playing in a G major uh, scale as opposed to basically playing around the fifth of the C, which is basically the, the mixolydian, uh, G mixolydian, right? So, and, and so, and I, and if you, if you know the differences between those, you can go way, I think you can go way further in being able to play different, uh, different things. So that's the idea.